I know there haven't been many updates on this project, but I've been up to a lot since I started. And in those few months since I last posted, I've completely redesigned the crankshaft. Um, I've started manufacturing the crankshaft and I started to integrate new designs into how smoothly it can rotate along with trying new manufacturing methods. And another thing that's been taking up a lot of my time is the fact that degree apprenticeship applications have opened. So I have been up applying to a lot of them. But that is kind of beside the point. The main thing that I needed to show you guys was the redesign to the crankshaft. A lot of the time I've been designing that any regards to how the actual crankshaft is going to be manufactured. So I've been putting some crazy tolerances, some crazy designs, and I'm just trying to get it to work. But then I realized when I started manufacturing that it's basically impossible to do that with the school's resources. So what I've done is redesigned it, separated some components so that I don't have to off offset the lathe. Um, I've simplified some of the components and I've kept the entire function the exact same because I've already ordered the metals, it's already arrived, so my redesigns have to be within the constraints of the metals that I've already ordered. So that was another challenge in of itself. So if you remember last time, these are what my components looked like. They had um, that stalk on the end, which is where you'd grip, that's the first component. And then um, it would have that second part that was centered, but um, slightly below and it was offset. So that um, I would have to offset the lathe and cut in it like that. And it had a little bit of a pin locking mechanism. So that was really, really difficult to actually manufacture. And what I decided to do was try and um, keep everything in line as possible. Everything that could be manufactured in line should be. And the ones that couldn't be, I completely disregarded it. And I decided to think of a new joining mechanism. So instead of having those little pins at the bottom of it, like over here, what I decided to do was remove it completely. And then um, I decided to have a little bit of a hole cut out, a 10 mil cut out, and then I would order some cylindrical rods, 10 millimeters, so that I could just place it inside there. That way there'd be no offset turning. I could do that cut in a mill and it would still join exactly as intended. That simplified my manufacturing significantly. So all I had to do was order them, cut it down to size, and then start attaching the components. But I haven't gotten to that part yet. So that's the first major design change that I had to do. But I didn't only do it on a few of the components, I had to do it on all of them where it was completely offset. And then for the rest of them where it had joining for the component and then that pin and then another component that would link to the next component. What I decided to do for that was completely center it so that again, I could do it without having to offset the lathe. And that worked like a charm because now I can drill a hole using the drill chuck on the lathe so that everything is kept centered for me. Um, it significantly stopped uh, worrying about it. Alignment um, trying to get it centered in the mill, all of that. So it actually turned, worked out in my favor. So I had to do that on all of the components. But one thing that I completely forgot to do was when I had finished doing my redesigns, I started manufacturing. I had done all of my drawings, that's completely fine. I printed them out, I showed them to Sir, we started working on it. He's been a massive help by the way. So. Um, I started manufacturing it, but then I only remembered like a few days ago that I hadn't tested this out. Yeah, so all of the manufacturing that I had done, all of the designs I had done, I hadn't tested the new redesigns. So I was kind of panicking because the metal was kind of expensive. We had gotten it all ordered in 304 stainless steel. We ordered the blocks of metal, like actual blocks for the engine block and the crankcase. We ordered all of it. So there was basically no going back, especially since I finished school in a few months. So. What I had to do was print out all of these components, print out all of the pins, and then um, I had to test it all out and make sure that hopefully it would work and the alignment would be perfect. Because again, it's the crankshaft. If the alignment's off, it's going to cause a lot of jamming. It's going to be dysfunctional. So it took me quite a bit. I decided to print it in the best quality that I could so that <laughs> it would be basically how I would actually print, excluding the layer lines. So um, what I did was spent probably four or five hours on the print. I did it like slow print settings, everything. And when it finally finished, what I decided to do was glue them together, start assembling them, and then moment of truth, luckily it worked which means that my design worked like first time absolutely perfect and I was happy because if I hadn't got those working I would have had to find some way to order those metals again, explain what happened and yeah that would have been a problem.
You can ignore all the locking up on this mechanism because I'm using the PLA model and this PLA model um, I printed at really low quality settings because I just wanted it done quickly. This was done ages ago, you can still see it's Mark 12. So I had just done the crankshaft. My other PETG model, the one that works the best, is at school and I'm on holidays right now. So um, I can't get that. I left it there so, so I could see it. But you can see that the alignment works fully. And it's fully functional. It's a bit crunchy though, that's because of the block. Anyway, so now that I've got the model and everything fully functional, what I decided to do was go onto Fusion and I wanted to animate it because um, I have to present all of this. I have to do a logbook, I have to get the model done and I have to do it by the time I leave school. Out of fully stainless steel. So I wanted to have a full presentation ready. This is like extra, but I wanted to get it all done and ready. So what I did was try doing a lot of joints. I have tried to do motion um, joints on my model, but one thing I've noticed is that when I'm locking it in place, I have to lock one of the components so it doesn't move around, and I've been able to rotate the other one. So that's working as it should. I want that to be able to rotate in the actual... Um, in the actual CAD. So that's working, but as soon as I try and move this one, the one all the way to the right, it's still locked in place. And I know it's because I have a rigid joint, but as soon as I try and change the joint that I have, the whole model starts moving around. If I put that as a revolute joint, it doesn't, it still doesn't rotate. And I can snap it back to position. Still doesn't work. So I need to try and figure out a way how to do that. And another thing is if I have the full assembly, including the pistons, as soon as I try rotating it, it does rotate the exact same, except for now this one's locked up. And the pistons don't move with it, like at all. You can see that uh, when I'm rotating that, the holes aren't even aligned anymore. So I need to find a way to join these together and get them to actually revolve in unison because I want to get this to play as a full animation in this um, assembly. Again, I need to lock that in place, but I need to play it as a full uh, um, assembly so that you can see how the whole model's supposed to work. But I've been struggling with that quite a bit. So if you have any tips for that, please leave a comment down below and, tell, and um, let me know how I can start animating that motion. Okay, now onto the actual design. So if I go onto my full assembly and I want to show you um, a section analysis of this so you can see where all of my new designs changed. So um, if I go to section analysis and you can see on the cut plane over here um, how it's actually working. That is... <clears throat> I was just confused there because I was like, what happened to those connecting pins? Anyway, so here's a section analysis and you can see um, these green ones are separate components. Um, you can see that um, the blue ones are the connecting rods, these are the pins, there's the piston heads, and then these are each of the components. So, a lot of things that have influenced my design, you can't really, first of all, it's an inline four crankshaft. You can't really change it a lot. But I wanted it to be unique enough from an actual crankshaft that simplifies my manufacturing and was cheap enough to me to, for me to be able to do with the materials that we've ordered. So, if you hop onto Google right here, or Safari, and I want to search inline 4 crankshaft, you can see a lot of the designs here. They're all, as expected, identical. They're basically identical. If you look at this one, um, if you look at these ones, if you look at this one, if you look at this one, um, the, even that one, it looks very identical. Um, but the thing is, you can't really change the crankshaft. It has it serves a purpose and you can't really do a lot. So the thing that I had to do to make it unique was instead of doing these insane counterbalance designs, I wanted it to still have that kind of look to it. But instead, what I decided to do was um, simplify it significantly. So you can see how it still has the radius, radius over here. You can still see that it has a flat over there. And the main difference was the connection over here. So it's small enough for me to be able to model it over here, simple enough for me to manufacture it, and also easy enough to be able to tell what's happening. So manufacturing started. My teacher, 
well, he's not even my teacher. He's just one of the lower school teachers, and he's been helping me a lot with his manufacturing. He's um he got a manufacturing degree, and he's been a lot of help. He's the one that ordered the materials for me. He's the one that's been able to um help me with all of this manufacturing, getting the materials, teaching me how to do specific setups for the lathes and the mill. He's been a massive help. Anyways, so um all of the materials that have come. Um, I've started to uh, manufacture them. I've got cylinders. These are for the crankshaft components. They're 25 mil diameter by whatever length. Some of them are uh, uniform length. Some of them are slightly longer. So um, I've ordered those. And what I've decided to do is put them in the chuck. And then I have to just shave off a lot of material on the right um, or left. And then I have to get it down to eight millimeters for two of the components. And then I have to keep the rest of it a perfect circle with a diameter of eight mil. So it would have eight mil there and then probably 10 mil length or 21 mil length and eight mil diameter. So that's just the blank. I had to do that with two of the components and then the other blanks are just cylinders of eight mil diameter, 25. 25 mil diameter, 8 mil length. So it just took quite a bit of work trying to get those down to the exact size. I'm working to a 0.05 millimeter tolerance because um, any small alignment is going to cause a lot of lockups. I think the actual tolerance that it would work to would probably be 0.1 to 0.15. But if I'm aiming for a 0.05 tolerance, then everything would work perfectly, even if it's slightly off. So I've got all of the blanks done. And then those connecting pieces like this one over here, um, I ordered those. They were they had um, a plus or minus one mil tolerance, which is awful. So um, I had to just shave all of those off. I ordered eight or ten, so I had some extras, and then I got um, two to perfect seventeen point two millimeters, um, and then I got the rest down to the um, length, and it was still within tolerance, but not perfectly on seventeen point two. All of that manufacturing done. So now I've got the blanks done, I've got them centered in the lathe, and now I have to go down to the milling section. I have to mill off um, the 10 mil holes and get ready to insert them and ream them. So whilst I'm waiting for that, I've decided to work on the piston heads. The piston heads were, in theory, they should have been really easy. That's literally all they are. Um, it's just cylinders with the board out center and then a hole drilled on them. But on our lathe, we've only got um, a boring bar that's big enough for 16 mil. I need to get it to 21 mil, not boring bar, end mil, sorry. So we put the end mil in, we just um, press it. It's now 16 mil. We have to get um, it in the mill and press it down to 20 mil and then I'll bore it one millimeter. That will get it to the right size. But I've tried two different end mills. I've been researching the cutting speed for stainless steel and I can't get it to cut for some reason. I have no I no idea why, but it's just not cutting it. So I've got all of them down to 16 mil. It's working perfectly, but I just can't get it to the 21. And that's just really weird. So um, that happened just before I broke up. So I have done some more research and now I need to try and implement it when I go straight back to school. And now these are all of the components done as blanks. I haven't started on the um, connecting rods yet and I have finished the um, piston connecting pins. So it's just the crankshaft left and then the piston heads and the connecting rods. Then I can work on the actual engine block but it's coming along really really nicely so far. If I have the components with me right now, I'll show you, but I've left them in Sir's room. Um, he's also kept all of the components safe, so um, thanks to him. Um, but another thing that I mentioned briefly just before was the degree apprenticeship applications. So that's another reason why I haven't been posting as much because they've all been coming out around now, um, like within a couple of months time. So applications, 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 online assessments, um, interviews, all of that. Um, and more of them are going to be coming out early next year. And then um, for the exam, I've got an exam in January as well. So hopefully I'll be able to update you guys a lot more uh, frequently. Um, I will definitely up uh, update you on this project more frequently than the four months ago that I last posted an update. So um, I'll probably get back to you sooner than that. So make sure you all stay up to date. Um, you can check out some other videos in that playlist over here. And um, I'm going to try and post a lot more frequently. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. I'll see you guys in the next one.